Hello. Hello. Welcome to our little wood. Yes. We've never filmed in here before, have we? No. The reason is I've got about 20 ticks crawling up my leg yeah, you for do a meal. You do tend to get very itchy when <laughs> you're in here. I thought it was my jumper. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, we told you that we'd found a badger's set. That's why we're filming in the wood, because that's where it is. Mm. And we managed to get some footage of the badgers, uh, which we called Brody and Blair. We did. When we showed you the badgers, you started sending in loads of photos and comments about badgers that you see all around the world. There's yes. about 11 different types of badger. Really? Yeah, the one here in Scotland is it's the same one we get throughout the UK, yeah. which is called the Eurasian badger. It's like the Eurasian eagle owl. It is. It can weigh anything from six to up to about 17 kilos. 17 kilos? And fully grown, they're just under a meter long, between about 70 and 90 centimeters long. Quite big. When we watched that first footage back, we noticed that Blair, the female, was pregnant. So the plan was to get another couple of wildlife cams and, and place them around the set. Obviously, we didn't want to disturb them. No, they didn't. But we wanted to try and get some footage of the cubs. Now, we know that it usually takes quite a few weeks between the cubs being born and them coming out of the set. Yes. And I wanted mum and dad to get used to the camera so it wasn't like a, a threat, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, the cubs are born, oh, we'll go put the cameras in. So we put the cameras in straight away to give mum and dad time to get used to them. And they did notice them. And they did notice them. They used to keep coming out and having a right old nosy. Now, what I have noticed when we looked at the footage is that Dad, Brody, was always the first one out. And he used to come out about half past seven every evening and he'd stay out all night hunting, I think. Probably. And he'd come back about half past five in the morning, dirty stop out. <gasps> it's not unusual for badgers to have other sets around the area that they live. The main set is where they live and sleep and bring up the young. Yeah. But if they're out hunting, it's a good idea for them to have other safe places. I don't know, you might get a hedgehog on steroids or a randy fox stalking them. You never know, do you? You're a randy fox. So, <laughs> so they have these secondary sets around where they live. And these sets can be 50, 100 metres long inside with various tunnels and little caverns and things. 100 metres? And they go back generations because what happens is the next generation of badgers kind of extend it a little bit more. So some of the sets can be over 100 years old. That set that they're living in could be older than our house. Wow. Now, after Brody's gone hunting, it's usually Blair's turn. And the clue that we had, that she'd had the cubs, was that when we watched the footage back, she was never leaving the set. She was coming to the front, but she was never actually leaving it. Now, the cubs don't normally come outside the set until they're about eight to 12 weeks old. So it was really exciting when I saw this footage of them appearing for the first time, which probably means they were born early in February, not long after we saw that first footage of a pregnant Blair. Wow. For the first few days, mum would come out first just to have a sniff about and make sure it was safe for the kids. And then very slowly, they started to edge their way out. You can see how nervous they are. A mum who's keeping a close eye on them, not letting them out of her sight for the first week or two. Now, it only took a few days before the cubs were coming out every day and exploring the surroundings. Mum was always about and she started teaching them the basics like how to dig for earthworms and make a toilet. But cubs will be cubs and a lot of the time learning just turned into playing. As the days went by, they also took more of an interest in posing for the cameras. How often do we change our bedding? Oh, probably when I have to hit it with a stick. Oh, he does as well. It's spare bedding, not our bedding. No. Luckily, badgers are a lot more house proud and they change their bedding every couple of days. 
and that's for a couple of reasons. One, it gets a bit stuffy in yeah. those little tunnels, but it also keeps down the fleas and the lice. While Brody was out hunting for food, Blair would come out of the set looking for new bedding. She'd be picking up grass and dead bracken and leaves, rolling them into a ball and then tucking it under her chin and taking it back to the set. She was also teaching the new cubs how to do it. And it wasn't long, it was just a few days before the cubs were copying mum, collecting little bits of grass and moss and bringing that back into the set. Do you know what Badger Poo's called? It's actually got a name. Really? Yeah, Scat. <laughs> it has. No! Yeah, Badger's Scat. I used to watch a lot of videos about scat. <laughs> no, I did. No, you did not, please. No, it's like a jazz thing. It's like scatting. It's like where you're making, like, you use your voice as an instrument. Ah, but you, you know oh, I, mean? I like, know not, what you mean now, what did yes. You, what did you think it meant? Like I'm not food. saying. All right. Uh, so badgers do like to keep a clean house. Yeah. Here's Dad, Brody, absolutely desperate for a big dump. <gasps> you can't say that. Or as Sean says, touching cloth. <laughs> so as he leaves the set, he comes and digs this really big hole and almost fills it with this massive poo. Another reason they do it outside the set is because it's like marking his territory with his scent and it warns off other badgers. To be fair, that is a good tactic because when he has a poo in our house, it does scare me off. <laughs> anyway, it's another skill that the young cubs had to learn and it wasn't more than a few days before mum was bringing them out and they were starting to practice digging with the big feet and claws. Yes. For the first week or two after they started coming out of the set, Mum never really let the cubs out of her sight. But she gradually started leaving them, just for short periods to start with, but then venturing further and further away, leaving them wondering where she'd gone. Over the last couple of days, they have started following her when she ventures away from the set. I don't think it'll be long before they're venturing further on their own. And then hopefully over the summer and autumn, they'll just start putting weight on, leading their own lives, and maybe this time next year, starting a family of their own. Now, a few of you lost it when we mentioned that we had badgers in our wood. Cuckoo! Because we've just been talking about the chickens, and of course, a few people are like, oh, the badgers are going to eat the chickens. You need to build a, a 60 metre high concrete wall, 17 foot thick, yeah. a 30 metre deep electric fence, and, and watchtowers with armed whippets and all. So I don't know everything. You're mad! <laughs> well, for a start, the chickens are very well protected. Yes. Anyway, badgers actually prefer to eat earthworms. Yes. They can eat hundreds in a night. That's why Brode is out all night digging up earthworms. It makes up about 75% of the diet. Three quarters of the diet is worms. Can you imagine that? Wow. Uh, I should have added like spaghetti, shouldn't I, to demonstrate. Oh. Now, if they can't find worms, which there are enough worms here, believe me, then they'll go for things like slugs or beetles or even uh, like small dead mice and small dead birds. Wow. So chickens are kind of right at, well, near the bottom of the list and they'd have to be small chicks and dead or really helpless, and not have another 20 fighting for them anyway. Wow. So our chickens are actually quite safe. And we've had them for almost a year, and nothing's happened. No, so we're not worried about that at all. Some other people mentioned hedgehogs as well, that they're a danger to hedgehogs. Now, yeah, it's true that again, if they've gone down this long list of other things they like to eat and none of it's available, they might go for baby hedgehogs if, if yeah. they're around. But according to the Badgers Trust, they actually live together quite well and it is only if they're desperate and round here where we live I guarantee there is no shortage of food for them. A few of you have also mentioned TB and that we should destroy the badgers because we'll catch TB or it'll spread it to the cattle and all the cattle will die. Now obviously because people are scared of that risk I thought I'd research it properly. Yeah. Now in England and Wales it's true that a small minority of badgers do carry TB which could theoretically be spread to cattle and right. it has happened in the past but we're in Scotland and things are a bit different here and in fact according to the Scottish government Scotland has been officially tuberculosis free since 2009. If you'd like more information about badgers then why not visit the Badgers Trust. I've put a link down in the video description and you can actually get the facts about them rather than reading the scary comments people leave on our vlogs. Everybody's an expert. <laughs> so there's a link in the video description. 
Now I've actually taken the cameras out away from the set now uh, to leave the badgers alone for the rest of the year yeah. uh, so they can raise the young uns. Uh, we hope you've liked this vlog. If you are not already, please subscribe to the channel. It means so much to us. It really does. Give the video a thumbs up, click the thumbs up for us. And if you hit the notification bell, YouTube will tell you every time we release a new video, which is usually on a Friday. At four o'clock. But we do miss the odd week now, don't we? Sometimes, yes. If you'd like to support us and help us and all our work we're doing with the wildlife and stuff up here, then there's a link, might be up above Sean's head. If it's not, it's definitely down in the video description and you'll get loads of exclusive content and photos and bits and pieces from us too. Are we done? I think so. I think. I wonder how much we've been bitten. I don't know. I can feel the ticks already. My legs are moving. <laughs> See you next week. Look after yourself. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. It takes 10 minutes to film and four hours of thinking. Three, two, one. Here we go. I've got wood. <laughs> no, I've got a wood. Brody and Blair, we called them. Yes. I've forgotten already. See? Uh, did, 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 uh, there's a song in my head that's going to be on this vlog and I can't get it out of my head. It's, it's like... So I had a bit of research, a bit of have a look, and... In, it, I, 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 un, un, and she was! She were up the duff! She were up the duff. <laughs> Keeps forgetting. Can't we get a teleprompter installed in your head? No. Or a brain? Cat! <laughs> my knees hurt, my thumbs hurt. I wish your mouth had hurt so you stopped using that. <laughs> you wouldn't like me to stop using my mouth. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Don't put that on. Normally, according to the Badgers Trust, beaver, not beavers. Uh, beavers? We were doing okay. so well. Spreading it to cap, uh, uh, yeah, uh, cattle gaps in between the words. And the government actually dis, 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 dis you. <laughs> now, obviously, because there is a, a big man behind you with an ax. <laughs> See you next week. Look after yourself. Bye-bye. Ta-ra. My legs are killing me, stuck there.